In my last video, I took a rain barrel and cooled an old PC. I was hoping to get a few hundred views and maybe a couple of likes, but I got blessed. Blessed by the YouTube algorithm. In the last 7 days, this video gathered almost 200,000 views and over 2,500 likes. I want to thank each and every one of you who watched the video or posted a comment and left a like. This really means much to me. I read every single comment. Thank you. Now for today's video. From what you have told me, I should do more crazy PC experiments. So let's do that. In this video, we'll be DIY dry ice cooling. But not with the old rig with the Q6600, no. I recently upgraded my main rig, so we have some pretty potent hardware to play with. Namely, an i7-4790K from 2014, with 4 cores and 8 threads. Cue the montage. Now, dry ice cooling needs a little more tools and preparations than water cooling. I got the dry ice from my local supermarket, but I didn't buy it there. When they get their frozen products, they get shipped in trolleys. Basically a fridge on rolls, cooled by, you guessed it, dry ice. This normally just gets thrown out, so all I had to do is ask nicely if I could have it. So, here's everything we need for this project. Any passive heatsink. This one is an Arctic Alpine 12 passive. We will also need Vaseline and a brush. I picked this up when I was at the shop to get the dry ice. I will explain why we need this shortly. And of course you need dry ice and some thick gloves. Dry ice is frozen CO2 with a temperature of minus 78 degrees Celsius. Touching this for more than a few seconds with bare hands will destroy your tissue irreversibly. Safety first. Safety first also applies to the PC. Although dry ice does not conduct electricity, the moisture out of the air does. Ice will form and potentially melt on the mainboard once the temperature sinks below the ambient temperature. So a coat of Vaseline has to be applied around the area of the CPU and backside of the mainboard to prevent shorting out components. Be sure to also get it under the VRM heatsink. We can leave this heatsink off, the dry ice will cool the MOSFETs through the mainboard. Before adding the dry ice, I test the passive heatsink as is, but immediately realized I was already thermal throttling on the desktop. Now it's time to put that dry ice on the heatsink. It made a horrible screeching sound when touching the metal, I'll spare your ears and not play it. But as soon as the heatsink temperature sank, it went away. You can immediately see the core temperatures decrease. Unfortunately, the sensors can't read temperatures lower than 0 degrees Celsius. But as you can see, in the BIOS we were easily going below minus 20. So I began testing the temperatures in Cinebench. Since they were below zero at 4.7 GHz, I raised the voltage to 1.45 volts and the multiplier to 50, giving me 5 GHz. What happened next shocked me a little bit. The temperatures hit 60 degrees. Even minus 78 degrees cold dry ice can't counter an i7-14790K running at insane speeds. Unfortunately, whatever I did, I could not get Cinebench stable. Even after fiddling around in the BIOS for half an hour, trying out new voltage and frequency combinations, I could not get it to complete a run. This time the PC wins, but I come to strike another day. The takeaway this time, cheap dry ice cooling is possible, but in this configuration kinda pointless. Maybe I will order a dry ice pot from Bartek's Extreme Cooling Store, link in the description. Did you enjoy the video? Consider giving it a thumbs up. Post your thoughts and suggestions and see you around. By the way, the next video will be a funny way to cool a Raspberry Pi. If you don't want to miss that, you should subscribe.